Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So I recently did a photo restoration I wanna share with you guys. This is a picture of me from December 1976. I was born in January 1976. Give you a quick little close up here. Now I am wearing yellow pajamas. This was taken apparently in Kmart. I'm gonna try to get close in here so you can see the cracks. See where it's all split right here? Now the reason why this picture is so precious is because we had a family fire in the early 90s and all my baby pictures were destroyed except for this one which was at my grandparents house and we are done Nah, i'm just kidding so what i did was i made a video how to get from here to here and it's actually very simple and i wanted to show you some techniques on how to do something like this not only fix the cracks but also recolorize your picture and these restorations are not hard like I said, if I can do it, you can do it. Now I did change the color of my jammies because I didn't like that hideous yellow, but you can see the before and after. And what I'd like to do is after you watch the video, comment in the comments section after you hit like, and let me know if you have a picture you'd like in a future episode restored, and we would restore that. Now you do need a couple things to get a full restoration like this. You need one tool, and that is Adobe Photoshop. Now with Photoshop, they do have a photo restoration which does a lot of the heavy lifting. It will get rid of about 50% of cracks on something like this. We've all seen that tool, we've seen it used even when you log into Adobe Photoshop, they show you the photo restoration tool at work and they show it working miracles. But in the real world, and especially with pictures that are this disintegrated, it doesn't work that well. But it does do a lot of the heavy lifting. But to get rid of 50% of the cracks, I'm fine with that. Then I use a spot healing brush and a clone stamp tool. And the other and final thing that I used was I would use uh, straight selections. And I would use that to color in. And as you can see, this one does not have a second window pane right here, and this one does. I just thought it gave the picture a little bit of balance. But if you'd like to join me on this journey, stay tuned. I'll post the video right now, and at the end of the video, if you can make it that far, post a comment about your picture and why it is sentimental. And like I said, we'll pick one to do in a future video and one after that. And after that, we'll make this a series. Thank you guys for joining me today. Stay tuned. And our computer. The next thing we are going to want to do is the first and most important thing. Wrong pen. I would recommend if you have or don't have, you can get one of these little pen tablets for pretty cheap. This one I believe I spent about $80 on. It's the XP Pen Deco 3. The reason why I like this one is because it's got a little wheel down here and it's got little buttons that you can pre-program as well as the pen itself can be pre-programmed for Photoshop or Lightroom. So let's open up our baby picture. Let's go ahead and get our image back up here. Now we're gonna take this image you can see, like I said, the dirt where tape was stuck to it. You see the cracks, everything else. The first thing we're going to want to do, see if I can minimize that, is take it and just open it in Photoshop. I'm going to open this up. I don't want to update right now. I'm trying to show everybody. We're going to unlock it, hit Control J, and that gives us a copy. And once it's unlocked, you go into Filter, Neuro Filter. Neurofilter now has JPEG artifacts removal and it also has photo restoration, which is great. So it is a beta software, so we're gonna cut that on. Just see without changing any sliders how good it does to our picture. This picture's so yellow it makes me look like I have jaundice on the monitor here. Alright. This is our starting point, okay? So I'm gonna hit Z for zoom, and I'm gonna slide this up. And it did a pretty good job. We have a thousand cracks to fix. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up just a little bit more for photo enhancement. Only thing I don't wanna do is change my face. Scratch reduction, I'm gonna turn that up to about 95, cause this thing has scratches all over it. And just see what I get. So even with a beast of a computer, this is still gonna take some time. If you do have a slower computer, just wait it out because you have to get these results. If you're interested, I'll make a series of videos on, that didn't help at all, did it? On a good computer for Photoshop, Lightroom, and Adobe Premiere. 
My wife and I actually just went through this. I think that's the best we're going to get. I'm going to hit Z for zoom again and zoom back out. Now you can see it changed my face and it also removed my eyebrow right here. So I'm going to have to take scratch reduction down a little bit more and you just have to find that sweet spot for everyone. Now the scratch reduction tool in here is very GPU heavy and I'm running a pretty good GPU. I got a RTX 3070 and it's still taking. 10 to 15 seconds just to move each slider. That brought part of the eyebrow back, but it did bring some of the scratches back. I don't want to enhance the face too much because once you enhance the face, I notice it will and can ruin the picture. So in this instance, it's making it sharper, so it's helping. But you don't want to go too far with it. Now let me turn down photo enhancement. Let me turn up photo enhancement. All right. I think right there is going to be pretty good. Go back out. So it is a good starting point. I don't like what it did with the hair up here, but we'll fix all this in time. A lot of this will have to be manually fixed with brushes. While we're in here, we're going to hit yes for current layer. We don't want to do too much on one layer. So one layer is going to be our scratches. Then we're gonna go back in with the layer that we just unscratched, back in the filter, neuro filters again, and then we're gonna colorize this time. And as you can see, it's a pretty good starting point. And this is where you're going to have to play with your sliders for your picture. I had so much yellow in that picture that it was just terrible. I might go a little more on the blue side to offset the yellows. And it's really not doing much in the regards of helping that. So we got color artifact reduction some noise reduction, which is gonna take away the sharpness. So be careful with those sliders. So you can see where, when you put output as a new color, that's the colors that it added, right there. Now you can output as a color like this, and then use your brush tool with a mask. Or you could just do it this way. So let's hit okay save that layer. Now let's go back down to that copy, hit Control J again, make a copy of the layer that's fixed. So this one, we're gonna name this layer as our color layer. Okay. Layer number two, this is our scratch layer. Then we made a copy of layer number two, which is our scratch layer. We're gonna run that all the way up top. And then we're gonna go back to filter again. Now the scratches have been removed, right? But we're gonna do it again. We can actually use the color one there. So let's just delete this one. Let's take the color one, make a copy of it. Take the color copy, run it to NeuroFilter, as we're back in neuro filters, we're gonna to try to remove the scratches one more time and maybe recolorize it one more time. Every time you do a, a process, it adds another layer of perfection on top of the old one. Until you, you maximize the results that Photoshop will give you. Let Photoshop do the heavy lifting because this thing could take you hours, days, weeks, or even months for some of these scratches. So if they can do the heavy lifting, let them do it. But every time you go in, make a new layer so it, it's a clean version. And then if it screws it up, just get rid of that layer. And then you don't have your original few layers getting messed up. You still have those to work on later on. That's the, the smart of doing it this way. So we're gonna hit photo restoration again. This one, the colorized, de-scratched version. See, and it actually gets Z for zoom. We're gonna pull this in. 
See, now it's starting to screw up the picture. So let me turn down Enhance Face a little bit. Let me turn down Photo Enhancement. Photo Enhancement, I see, is just adding a lot more color, which is fine. I need to focus on the scratch reduction. And what it's doing is it's having a hard time now and it's blurring the background with the baby, with the clothes, with everything. And like I said, the scratch reduction tool, that's the one that is really the GPU heavy one that takes time. While that's running, I'm gonna go into adjustments. Look over here. Noise reduction, color noise reduction, halftone artifacts. We don't really have any of this stuff to worry about. Now, I think we have a good starting point. Now, if you blow up your picture, you can see the pixels are now square. They're not circle anymore. So we took a circled picture, or basically we took pictures of, sorry. So basically we took a picture that was about 50 years old, give or take a couple years. And we took circle pictures, converted them into squares. Whenever you change a circle into a square, you're squeezing the outside edges of it. This is where things get blurred, is right in here. This is where you're gonna to have to come in with your clone stamp tool, with your brushes, and do the cleanup. So let them do the heavy lifting, you do the cleanup. Will it be a perfect picture when we're done? No. I'm not trying to get perfection from a 50 year old picture, I'm just trying to clean it up as a gift. So. We're going to clean a lot of this up. So let's hit OK because this is another layer. And then in the end, we'll also recolorize. Why are you going far left? Photoshop's acting up today, guys. So let's hit Z for zoom. Let's pull this up and let's start working on some of this little area. I think we're going to start with the face. So let's go over here and let's clean up this mouth right here. So what I'll do is we'll take the existing layer we're on and minimize our little tool there and come in and just, what we want to do is let the pixels match up with the other pixels. And as you can see, because we're pixel peeping, this is where things are going to get real tedious real quick. But we're just adding color to where the pixels didn't get colored right here. And if you can't get the solution you want right here, this is where you're going to have to use your clone stamp tool. And it's just a matter of getting good with your tools and learning the tools and what works best. There's going to be a lot of dancing going on between this tool and that tool for something like this. So let's zoom back out and see how much better the mouth's getting. It still needs a little color right there, but that's fine for now. I'm gonna go over here, this guy again. Let's see if we can fix this a little bit. And now, this is where having your pen and your palette get you feeling like Bob Ross. And as you can see, I'm upside down already. So let me go cut the software back on. XD pen, yes, there we go. There's this area here I wanna fix, so let me use the clone for this one. You don't wanna to go too big with your clone stamp tool either on something like this. I know I'm adding scratches here, but I'm also getting rid of a, a funky spot. So, there we go. Now we're gonna have to minimize this.
want to get rid of some of that color. Let's take this color. You gotta keep your colors right. And get in here and then come down here. Separate that from there. And then over here we're gonna do the same thing along the side of the face. To kind of bring back some of that. Over here, I'm gonna hit Alt, bring this down. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. It's a big one, isn't it? This is a big project picture right here. Take some of this green and bring it down. There we go. Let's bring some of that down there. Smudge that in. Got that 1970s bokeh going on. Whoa. Whoa. Should be no blue in there. There we go. And that. Zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in. It's looking pretty good. We got the head shape back. Poor kid got a big peanut. I see some blue in here. You start seeing where we've fixed a few things. Cleaned up the ear a little bit. Around the shape of the face right here we've cleaned up. We've cleaned up around here a little bit. So it's coming along. Hey guys, thank you for making it to the end of the video. I just wanted to thank you for joining me today. As you can see, the original picture, yellow, cracked, discolored, almost half a century old, got revised to something really nice. Now this is a revision to the picture at the end of the video. As you've seen at the end of the video, there was a little bit of discolorization here and the jammy jams were still a little bit yellow, which was one of the favorite colors of the 1970s, yellows and browns, which I was never a big fan of. So I used a saturation slider, turned it down, took my brush and just ran it across the jams and then I made sure not to touch the hands. And that's pretty much it for the edit. We brought back the color in the sky, a couple clouds, we brought back the whole mountain in the background, brought back some colors here. We fixed and added an actual window pane here to center the cute little baby there. And finally, we just did a print, as you can see and it printed out nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out, frame it for my mom. If you would like to see these videos in the future, just let me know in the comments. What I would also like to do, with your permission, is to have you guys comment below and tell me what is a picture that you have that you would potentially want to see in a future video. Yes, your pictures. I'd like to uh, include your pictures, maybe possibly on a weekly basis, and we clean them up. So tell me what you think about that. If you're interested, like I said, comment below. We'll try to get in touch and we'll feature your picture in a future episode. Thank you once again. This is Dion here at Photo Beast. I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year's. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.